Welcome to another show of Celebrate Life. Uh, my name is Gary DeCarlis, and I'll be your host today again. The inspiration for the show, of course, is all about the present. It's all about uh, aiding folks in Vermont and some from outside Vermont who are living life to their fullest. Um, I, like many of you, have read many an obituary over the years and wish that I had met that person while they were alive. Well, this show is dedicated to do just that, meet wonderful people who are very much in the, the fullest of their life today. So you have a chance to meet them, under, uh, learn from them, and uh, even ask them questions. If you do have any questions for our guests, please write me at celebratelife0747 at gmail.com, and I'll make sure those questions are got to the host, gotten to the host, and we'll get back to you. I'm a strong believer that everybody has a story to tell. And this show is about telling those stories so that we all can benefit from people's lives. So uh, without further ado, uh, let me introduce our guest for today, Josh Popri. Hello, Josh, welcome. Hi, it's my honor to be here. Good to have you here. And um, we're gonna celebrate your life today, Josh. Absolutely. So, um, Let's start by telling us, telling the audience a little bit about your early life. You know, was there anything that stood out for you when you were a young boy? All right. Ready, Mom? Okay. <clears throat> I had a rough start to life. I was born with bullying syndrome, but wasn't diagnosed until I was three and a half years old. Bullying syndrome is a genetic condition that is present at birth and can affect anyone. It's, it is a micro de 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 deletion. deletion that randomly occurs during development of the fetus. 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 Yeah. And occurs on chromosome seven. There are only about 25 genes that are missing. It's characterized by medical problems, including cardiovascular disease, developmental delays, and learning challenges. Those often occur side by side with striking probabilities, high social personalities, and affinity for music. Women's syndrome occurs equally in males and females in all cultures worldwide. I was a little peanut with a birth weight of only four pounds, six ounces. I was pretty much full term I was only two weeks early for my mom's due date. Babies with women's syndrome are born with low birth weight and are slow to gain weight. I would only gain about one pound per year. At just one week of age, I was rehospitalized as I was having difficulty nursing from the breast and dropped down to three pounds and 11 ounces. My mom had to pump her breast milk to include uh, bottles into bottles into yeah. bottles and feed medicine, feed you a certain amount certain every, amount three, every hours. three hours. The hospital doctors had my mom adding two packages of Fort milk, fortifier fortifier extra calories to her breast milk because they didn't feel I was gaining weight quickly enough. If I didn't drink all the bottle. The hospital staff then put a tube going through my nostril right down into my stomach. I was finally discharged two weeks later at five pounds. When I was just a few months old, my doctor heard murmur, a heart murmur, a heart murmur, and he sent me to a cardiologist for an echocardiogram when I was diagnosed. Where you were diagnosed. Where I was diagnosed to have narrowing and pulmonary of a yeah, of a pulmonary, a yeah. pulmonary that went from artery, 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 artery. Yep. that went from my heart to my lungs. The cardiologist took my mom told, told my mom that he he expanded, expected, texted that would get bigger as I grew bigger and wanted to see me back in two years. Yeah, so he so he expected that your artery, the narrowing of your artery, would get bigger as you got bigger. Yeah. <clears throat> During my first five years of life, I had lots of upper respiratory and ear infections. I eventually had to have tubes put in my ears. I had five surgeries for ear tubes 
because after they fell out, I was still having issues. So they had to keep me keep putting the tubes in my ears. Prior to my Williams syndrome diagnosis, my doctor had me going through all sorts of tests to try to determine what was wrong or rule out other things because I was growing. You weren't growing. Wasn't yep. growing currently to the normal. According, according to the normal growth chart. Growth chart. Thanks, mom. Yep. <laughs> Heck, I wasn't even on the growth chart. And I also wasn't meeting typical, meeting typ meeting typical developmental milestones. Mm -hmm. For example, I didn't crawl until I was one year old, and I didn't walk until I was two years old. Some of the tests I've done was a bone age studies sweat, sweat. Yeah, sweat test to rule out cystic 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 fibrosis cystic fibrosis and lots of blood tests. My doctor even sent me to Boston Children's Hospital to see a GI yeah, right. nutritious, nutritionist. nutritionist to see if I had an issue with proceeding processing processing complex carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. Well, I was there. They tried to have a geneticist. Geneticist see me as well, but the clinic was too busy and said I would have to come back to Boston to be seen at the, the genetic clinic. clinic. <clears throat> Getting a little dusted here. When I got back home, my mom talked with my doctor about the doctors in Boston. What the doctors what, in Boston said. What yep. the Boston said. And he told my mom there was no need to go back to Boston as we had to go. We had a good geneticist. We had a good geneticist right here in Vermont. I saw the genesis, but at that time, he didn't disclose what he was thinking and said he wanted to see me back in four months. Four months later, she told my mom about Williams syndrome and gave her a brochure that explained all the different characteristics of Williams syndrome. My mom said the brochure described me to a T. The so genes geneticist, geneticist <laughs> explained the reason for wanting to wait the four months to tell my mom about Williams syndrome was because he wanted to see how my facial features developed. This is because people with Williams syndrome have similar facial features and facial features and the facial features and the facial features become, become more prominent. prominant as a person ages, ages. Yeah. the geneticist the geneticist said he was more sure, sure than the first time he saw me that it was one syndrome but he wasn't 100 percent positive he told my mom about a blood test we could do to confirm one syndrome so my mom told him, yes, let's do it. Three weeks later, we had a diagnosis of Williams syndrome. About a month later, I had my two-year follow-up with the cardiologist, and he found that my heart murmur had changed. They did another echocardiogram and found that I had narrowing just above my main heart. Artery. Artery valve. It was, valve called, yeah. it was called... It was called... Sup supra, supra valvular valvular aortic aortic stenosis this is a common heart issue for people with Williams syndrome the doctor told my mom that this type of narrowing would require open heart surgery at age three and a half i went to boston children's hospital and had the open heart surgery to correct the narrowing if i didn't have that surgery the narrowing narrowing would have continued to get worse and would have eventually closed completely, stopping my heart from beating, being Beam. able yeah. to pump blood through my body, and I would have died. One side of my heart was already in, enlarged from if it having from, from it having to work harder. Having to work harder to pump blood through the narrowing. While at Boston for my heart surgery, I developed complications after the surgery. My mom told us that I was was fussy, which was not normally for me, and that I didn't want to eat much. So they did an emergency echocardiogram right in my room, and found that I had developed fluid around the heart. I had to go back into ICU to be treated for this. Luckily, they were able to treat it with medication, 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 and didn't 
have to go back and to put into drainage tube. To put in a drainage tube. The hospital say was only supposed to be about seven to five days, but ended up having to stay for two weeks due to the complications. During my school year, I had the full time para educator. Educator. That's what I said. Educator who helped me with all my schoolwork. With the para educator's help, I was able to get on the honor roll several times. This would not have been possible without that help. My mom always made sure that I had what I needed and it advocated for me to get what I needed to be successful. In my high school years, I was the school mascot, Ace the Seahorse, at some of the high school football, basketball, and field hockey games. It was the first time a student was allowed to be the mascot. Prior to that, a staff member did it. I also helped give recognition of the school mascot by attending several mascot events in the community. I did University of Mount Eastern Mascot March. I attended a champion, a champ the Lake Monsters birthday bash and UVM's rally birthday party. I also attended a mascot hoopapalooza one year at City Hall Park. My senior year, my fellow classmate dedicated the yearbook to me. This was the first time in BHS history that a graduating senior class dedicated the yearbook to a fellow classmate. Prior to that, it has always been dedicated to a staff member. This is what my fellow senior class members said about me. <clears throat> to some of the seahorse may not seem like a fearsome mascot, but for the students and faculty of BHS, Ace the Seahorse represents much more than a costume. If you want to see Ace around the BHS community, you don't have to look far. Whether he's cheering on a sports team, posing for the cover of the yearbook, or welcoming new students to our school, Ace in is an integral is an integral part of expressing our school's pride. Ace also made an appearance outside of the BHS community at events such as Hippopalooza, Rally's Cat Birthday Party, and the Easter Mascot March. When the class of 2012 was asked who has made the lasting impression of their four years at BHS, the choice was clear. For the past four years, a member of our class has given a personality oops, was that right? Yep. Okay. To the character of Ace. His spirit and dedications to our school has just has it's... sent him a part, an icon, and a role model. The class of 2012 would like to dedicate this year's Henri Oriad. Oriad to Josh Bubbly for representing and encouraging school spirit as Ace. I was also a volunteer puppeteer with Puppeting Education. I was their bully expert, and over my four years, in high school, traveled with them to different schools to perform the bullying skit. I put on thousands of hours in volunteer time. While the staff members of Public Education nominated me for the United Way Hometown Hero Award, and I won the award in the youth category. Okay, that was that was the year years. <laughs> nice. Well, first of all, wonderful reading, Josh. <laughs> and second of all, my goodness, you've been through the ringer. So <laughs> yes. tell me, you know, you're, you're very positive, like you're, you're just a positive person. How did you get to be that positive person? Well, it took me like a while to figure out how to be in that situation because I learned it from entertainers. I learned it from other perceptive people's way to see how they feel about you themselves. Learned it from me. I also learned it from my mom. <laughs> so uh, I learned it from everyone, I guess. Yes. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, as they say, huh? <laughs> yep. <laughs> now, now, when you were the, the mascot for this high school, <clears throat> and there's a lot of entertaining that goes along with that, right? Yes. Is that when you really caught the wave of enjoying to be an entertainer? Oh, absolutely. I think so, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it took me a while to figure out what mascots really do and 
that got me into thinking if I ever become a mascot, I would. And so I did. Wow. He, he always had um, the, you know, it, it comes with William syndrome, the musicality um, right. and want loving music, but he's always had, um, you know, never been afraid to get up in front of a group of people and do a dance move or anything. He's never been shy like that. And mm -hmm. um, there was a story from elementary school when he was in elementary school, one of the teachers said during um, the lunch, lunch time, they were, had music playing in the, in the cafeteria and he like got up in front of the whole lunch group and started dancing. <laughs> so, <laughs> And did they applaud? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember what they said. Do you remember? I think. Do you remember doing that? <laughs> I do remember doing that, but I don't remember what each of them said. I think they said, wow, that's amazing or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah. yeah. Now, there's, there's, there's also a staff member in elementary school that um, she used to run the after school program there. And she had told me one time that if she was having a bad day, she would seek out Joshua because he always had something good to say, like, oh, mm. she was wearing a pin, like, oh, your pin's really beautiful, or, mm. you know, and it would, he would just cheer her up. So mm. <laughs> you bring joy to a lot of people, don't you, Josh? Yes, I do. Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> Josh, do you have, is there any, and I know that you like to do, you're an entertainer, and is there any one particular person that you model yourself after that you really, gravitate to and and really like who he or she is who, absolutely would that be my mom no and the oh. entertainer an oh, entertainer the, who's the entertainer that inspired the entertainer you? oh the entertainer um i would say um has kind of same name oh your what's your middle name Michael. Oh, yeah. Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson. OK. Why do you like Michael Jackson? Well, it took me a while to learn what he actually did in real life. So I was, you know, listening to some of the songs on the radio and I thought, I don't know if Michael Jackson really danced. But then by watching his videos just really inspired me to get that feeling. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, I started to learn to dance like Michael and perform like him. When I went, as an example, when I went to the Champagne Valley Fair, I got to see a Michael Jackson impersonator that was there at the fair and really saw me dancing with them. So they really enjoyed that. You 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 went up and danced with them? Yeah, not up on stage, but he went up in on the um on the lawn in front of the stage. Oh and yeah, he was he was doing the same dance moves, and Joshua didn't see it because his back was to the stage, and but the the performer came up and pointed to him and went like this that he loved it, you know, because <laughs> he was doing the same exact moves. Wow, how he, cool he, is that? Yeah, <laughs> it's like a connection, and I've been meeting a lot of great impersonators that do Michael Jackson, and I aspire them. The oh, people at the fairgrounds too were also like cheering him on, and people coming up to me saying, "Wow, he's really good!" You know, <laughs> people were videoing him with their phones. And <laughs> wow, <I'm> famous. <laughs> so it would be nice when, uh, as as a part of the show, if we could have a little film clip to put on the uh, TV show of you doing Michael Jackson. Oh. I can probably send you one of those. I'll have to probably do a little snippet of it and send or, it or, to you. or send it and we can snip it over you know the, oh yeah the, that yeah. that too i could do that too <laughs> okay good excellent so and and you've actually you've gone out and performed as michael jackson josh yes i have it i started off my mj impersonations at a school high school a yeah. high school i did a town show shows, yeah. and it was there was a thing called bash for cash and I was hoping to be one of the person there, but they didn't pick me. So I was kind of like, yeah, I know. So then I kept moving on and moving on until things changed. And um, I did more Michael Jackson when I was doing dancing with my friend Lois and at the Flynn, at he the did Flynn the, theater. Yeah, they, he, he did some of the Flynn dance classes. One of when he was still in high school, there was one of his teachers 
that told him it was right when Michael Jackson passed. And so there was a teacher at the Flynn Theater um, that was doing a whole class tribute class of just all Michael Jackson songs. Wow. So they, so he knew how much Joshua loved Michael Jackson. So he told him about it and we signed him up. And then he continued after that to still do for several years after yes. to do the dance classes. And at the end of the, the, I forget how long the dance classes were like eight weeks or something. Um, maybe 15 weeks. I'm not sure. But at the end, they actually get to perform on the main stage at the Flynn theater and wow. um, anybody can go and watch it. They just ask for like a, you know, monetary donation, like $5 or whatever to support the, you know, the dancers. And for me, it was like a free concert dance show. <laughs> and I was really to perform at the Flynn States and I loved it. It was oh. incredible. Love the dancers and I love entertainers that do some of my favorite artists. Wow. That's fantastic. Uh, so you not only liked Michael Jackson's music, but you liked his dancing. Yes. Yeah, and he he's he was quite a dancer, no question about that. <laughs> yeah. So well, great. So tell us a little bit more about your life. What what are some of the things you love to do? Okay, so uh, go into the next. I love my family very much. They are my world. In August of 2015, I lost my father due to suicide. He was 51. That was a very difficult time for me. But my mom and friends were there to help me get through that very difficult time. I miss him a lot. When I graduated from high school, I first wanted to start my own mascotting business. But instead, I'm doing Big J Entertainment instead. After being out of high school for several years... I went back to school and attended the Think College program at UVM. I graduated from the program two years later. While still in Think College, I did an internship as a DJ at Big Heavy World, as that is where my next career focus went to. I currently work part-time at Marshalls and work three days a week. I worked at Marshalls for eight years. This will be my ninth this, year. This May, this, this coming May. This May will be my ninth year anniversary with them. Yeah. <clears throat> I love music and I love to entertain people and make them laugh. I can play pretty much any instrument by ear just by listening to a song on the radio or streaming on Spotify. Some of my favorites Travel experiences have been going through the Williams Syndrome conventions in different states. I got to go, I got to do a lot of fun things like going to Bush Gardens Amusement Park, seeing a Detroit Tigers game at their home stadium, and seeing my most favorite entertainment of all, the Blue Man Group. A favorite part, family, a family vacation, a favorite family vacation was going to Bethany Beach in Delaware. Also, like going to Arizona to visit my aunt. And do lots of fun sightseeing things there. This spring, me and my mom and a, and stepdad and one of my close friends are planning to take an Amtrak train to New York City for the weekend. We're planning to see, of course, like I mentioned, the Blue Man Group, visit the 9-11 Memorial, and do some other fun things. <clears throat> my hobbies are doing Michael Jackson and are doing Michael Jackson impressions. I have several outfits. From NJ's different music videos. I also like to do voice impressions. Are you guys ready for them? Give me one. Give me a couple. Okay, I can do Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump, and many Star Wars characters, <laughs> such as Chancellor Palpatine. Yo now. Three CPO. Darth Vader. Anakin Skywalker. And Obi-Wan Kenobi. Hello there. I also like playing on my Oculus Quest 2 virtual reality game. My favorite sports are Boston Bruins, uh, Giants. I can just name New York oh, Yankees. New Yankees. <laughs> I can name a few. Uh huh. It sounds like you have a very rich life, Josh. Yeah. My life model is to spread peace, love, and joy to all. Wow. Isn't that nice? How do you do that? How do you spread peace, joy, and love to all? 
Oh, that's a good question. Well, I think you you do it naturally, you know, with your entertain, you know, your you're wanting to entertain people, you know. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and your positivity. Mm -hmm. That's that's wonderful. Anything um, else you want to say, Josh, about your life? How old are you now these days? Um, I am now 30 and I'm turning 31 this November. Fantastic. Fantastic. So you've been you went through a lot as a young boy. You've come through that and you've won the admiration of your peers for through high school for sure. And then now as an adult, you also are doing some amazing things that bring joy to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Like tell yeah. tell them what you're gonna be doing in February. Oh yeah. In February, I before last year I got to do this, and this year I'm doing it again. I'm performing at higher grounds with the mirror dancers and I'm performing at winter is a drag ball hosted by the house of, of, of the May. And um, they do a lot of fun things around there too. Wow. Amazing. Um, other things you've done is um, you have, so we used to, I don't know if you're familiar with the band Mango Jam. Mm -hmm. So when they, back when, the spot on the dock was called breakwaters yeah. they would play there a lot and joshua was always up there in front of the, the band dancing and he was mimicking the rub board and then um emily she's one of the um leaders of the band um she invited him up on stage you know to and gave him the rub board and he just started jamming with him <laughs> <laughs> and, so now uh, periodically he he has she she has invited him to um be their rub board player at different times be oh a guest player yeah so it was um during mardi gras one year at red square they were playing and he went with his rub board and he did the rub board he also has a melodica and he played that a little bit for wow uh, for, for, one of, for one of their songs i can't yeah. remember what the name of it but i enjoy playing that tune such a good beat to it yeah so wow. and and emily didn't didn't know you know like when she when she realized you know how good he was just by listening <laughs> it's like that's when she started you know inviting him as a guest you know rub board player at times he hasn't done it in a while but um yeah my legacy moves on for that when he was real little we went to see um we went down to new hampshire and we saw um another zydeco band uh terrence simeon and he must have been i don't know he must i think he was over five but maybe maybe six years old or something i don't know he wasn't that old and doing the same thing playing and and terrence simeon invited him up on stage, gave him the rub board, and he's jamming with Terrence Simeon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, um, and and Terrence even put his hat on on you. He took his hat off and put it on you. And <laughs> oh my god! And the guy who played the rub board was named was Ralph Funtlu, and um, he's he taught me everything about rub boards. So that's what got me into playing with Mango Jam and other Zydeco members. Ah. Uh. So he has his own rub board. He has a lot of different instruments, you know. Um, I have a collection of some of my favorites. Yeah. He played cello all through um all, all through school years. Through uh yeah, through middle school and high school. I'm no kidding. I that's the, amazing. Yeah, so, the orchestra. Yeah. So that you know, yes. Yeah, so the idea that um people with Williams syndrome have a tendency to enjoy music. Josh, you're a living example of just embracing music. And I know that it's something that brings a lot of joy to people when you, as a musician. You um, bet. And, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, wonderful. One of, one of the, I'll tell you a little story when we were meeting with the geneticist uh, the second time after the four months um, going back, he had he wanted to word this question to me very carefully and he and he worded it because he didn't want to prompt my response and he had asked me he said does joshua have an unusual attraction to music and i instantly said yes because 
the house that we had before it was a raised ranch his bedroom was at one end of the hall uh, of the house one one side and then our living room was on the other side i had new mtv back when mtv was all music i <laughs> uh, had mtv on he was intently playing with a toy in his bedroom he heard the music he crawled out sat his butt in front of that tv through the whole video started when that video ended he started to try to crawl away and then a new video came on and he sat there for that whole video and i'm like for an, a baby to keep their attention that long on one thing is wow not, amazing not, uh, typical <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. so karen as a mom uh this has been quite a journey oh yes <laughs> it has. yes it, it sounds like uh josh has opened up a world to you that who would have known right right yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. It's like it's it's not been easy. It's been hard, you know, at times, and you know. But I've had lots of support myself, um, with family and you know helping out and stuff. But yeah, it's it's been a journey for sure. <laughs> journey. That's great. That's great. And Josh, you know, you mentioned earlier the the love and support you've gotten from your mom and and family has really made a huge difference for you. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. So, yeah come yeah, on. They're close knit family for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and strong family. You know, his pediatrician, his, you know, when he retired, um, he uh where this is a place where we used to dock our boat. Um, he was telling my husband, um, one time he's like he he was talking, it was before um Joshua had hearing aids and stuff. Um, but he was talking to us at this party, you know, the Marina was having, and, um, he said to, to my husband, Dave saying strong women in this family. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked at, he looked at Dr. Murray and said, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you benefited greatly from those strong women, right? Josh? <laughs> <laughs> yes he has yeah <laughs> that's great well wow, that's wonderful so is there anything that we haven't touched on in your life that you would like to mention hmm I'm trying to think about that well one. last year uh he you want to tell him one thing that you tried i got into dragon boating um oh yeah and uh the the my coach um had invited to bring one time my mother brought him down just to watch he wanted to watch us um and so he, the coach had invited him says hey bring him bring him along you know he he knew joshua had a disability and he says you know i'd like to you know help you know people with disabilities to enjoy the sport too and he he tried it and he did pretty well <laughs> yeah so i went on this dragon boat for the very first time and i had jenny at the time but we both went to that experience and I couldn't believe how incredible these people are when it comes to Dragon Ball because that's my new favorite thing now because I got to go watch Dragon Ball Festival and that just mm. inspires me to see something like that happen. Yep. So I went on that boat ride and I tried, you know, it was something the like pad this. the paddle. Yeah, yeah, you have to have like an A-frame and you're paddling and you have to really rotate it's a lot of uh, work it's a lot of work. of work yes a lot it's a big workout yes it and is. isn't there someone on that boat that's beating a drum to keep the um the that's during timing? the fest yeah during the festival they do that yeah so uh -huh. they the the drummer um watches the first two people in the boat at the front of the boat set the pace so the drummer watches those people so as soon as their paddles go on the water the drummer starts drumming so that everybody else, you know, gotcha. can follow. follow. But everybody else was supposed to be looking straight ahead anyways and following. And we're, and everybody's, it's all teamwork, you know, it's all teamwork. So, yeah. um, but it's, it's a, it's a fun sport. It's really fun. And, That's you know, great. he enjoyed it. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to uh, watching it again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Josh, I know that Special Olympics has been a part of your life for years, right? What is oh, it? absolutely. I'm a very strong and tough competitor. Yes, you are. Tell us about what Special Olympics has meant to you. Oh, that's a very great question. Special Olympics means to me like meeting new friends and experiencing their careers with Special Olympics. It's and like an extended family. Yeah. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. way back in 2000, 
13, I represented Team USA to go to South Korea. No way. You do. Yeah. Yep. In uh, cross country skiing. Wow. Wow. So that, was, that was a super experience for me. I'll never forget. Yeah, that was. Wow. That's experience. wonderful. Yeah. He did. Uh, um, he got fourth and fifth place. Um, the fifth place should have been a fourth place. They kind of messed <laughs> up on that. But um, but he yeah, he did during the prelim preliminary races. He skied the fastest he's ever skied. Uh, it was one of the shorter races, uh, like a hundred meter or something. Yeah. Um, but he skied the fastest he that had ever skied. And the competition there, oh my lord, it was it was tough, really tough. <laughs> I mean, the, these it was amazing to see what these athletes can do. I mean, and how fast they can go. It yeah. was just totally amazing. <laughs> that is. <laughs> Well, it's the, com the competitions, the whole world, right? Oh right. my, yeah, we had seven competitors back. Yeah, he that. was. Yeah, in his division, he had like seven to eight people in his Ooh. division, and Ooh. and he came in out of all of those, like like in the and and um, the preliminary, he came in third in one of the you know wow. preliminary races. So to come in fourth, you know, he didn't get a medal, but you know, still yeah. it was. It was uh, still a good experience, and yeah, and no, I'll you know even the people from USA really gave me a huge strong support of, of winning those. That's wonderful, and I couldn't believe it. It was wow. it was yep. just a gathering of new friends and new family members. So mm -hmm. special. Olympics. And what sports yep. do you like to do with Special Olympics? Um, well, I like to do bowling, basketball, bocce. Swimming now, and country skiing. Of course, country skiing. You've done swimming. Um, I said swimming. Yeah, you did say swimming. Uh, you've done. Uh, oh yeah, track and field. Do you field. have any medals to show for your efforts? Oh yeah, he's got lots. <laughs> yeah, I do have lots of medals. Uh huh. I'm not wearing any of them, but. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you. Right. Also let's see what else did you try softball softball yeah yeah you've done softball you tried soccer one year but didn't like that yeah soccer was unsuccessful okay well yeah well uh, so that's been a big part of your life too is special olympics absolutely yeah how's yeah. work when you're working at marshall's what's that like for you do you enjoy that Oh yeah, the staff and everybody is wonderful. They treat people right, and I'm like, I'm and that's a workplace I need to be when someone treats me that way. And if if they're not nice people, then I won't work for them. Yeah, they're very. It's I was very impressed when he first. Um, uh, I had gone there with him to um help him fill out the paperwork to for employment and all of that, and um we when we were asking questions like what about special olympics you know because then we didn't know what his schedule was going to be and and there were there was thought that he might be working on the weekends mm -hmm. and i'm like well weekends he's got special olympics during certain times of the year and this and that and they said they were very supportive of that and they would work with him you know so that it's a good company they're really good to their yeah. employees and and they're very accommodating and understand that the employees have lives, you know, and things that they like to do. And so they're supportive, you know, supportive of that. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's great. And, and, and he's got, your... yeah, the, go they're natural, are, you know, there's, they provide a lot of natural supports too. He does have a worker that goes with him a couple of days and stays with him during his shift. Um, but there's one day he's there just himself, but um, he has some nice natural mm -hmm. supports from his colleagues. That's great, Josh. So, um, Josh, is there, what what haven't you done yet in your life that you want to do? If you had a magic wand. Oh, boy, there's lots. <laughs> oh, my. There's a lot. Like, I want to, you know, travel to new places I've never been to. or Like where? Um, Like Orlando. Want to go there. Want to visit Dublin or Australia. Um, Ireland, you said you Ireland, to go to. Yep, yeah. I said Dublin. Dublin's probably oh, right. Ireland. Dublin, Ireland. Yeah. Yep, I love to explore those countries and and of course you know visit Las Vegas and see all kinds of stuff. 
Yeah. Going, you've been to a lot of places with the Williamson conventions we've gone to. Um, hmm. uh, so we've been to California. Yep, California. a couple of times. Yep, and did of course Disneyland had to do that while we were there. Of course. <laughs> and, cool. and I recently had a meeting with my group that I'm in with Williamson, and there's a lot of people that have the same things I have. So it's called Adventure Seekers. And what that is is that it's a Williams syndrome uh, Facebook group, and it's all people with Williams syndrome, um, and they get together on Zoom and That's talk cool. about different things. Yeah. Yep, and they're talking about you know always. They're, they're yeah they're planning a an Orlando trip this this year, which we don't know if we'll be able to go to or not. But... Mm-hmm. I already told them that I'm planning on going for now. So. Mm-hmm. So that's these are people from around the world, around the country. Yeah. Wow. Yep. It's like that's wonderful. Yeah, it's like being in a convention where you get to do fun things while my parents were in the classes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're like little <laughs> little mini seminars for the parents. Um, you know, we haven't gone in many, many years now. They're only every two years, but we haven't gone for a while because he's no longer in school anymore and the cost you know, to go is, you know expensive but um yeah we've been to california we've been to michigan that's where their home office is based out of is in michigan we've gone to uh shoot where is it um boston boston that's where i first met the blue men group yeah we Mm -hmm. uh st louis went to st louis missouri got to see on top of the arch we got to see the arch and go through the arch nice didn't right. like the elevator ride. It was kind of scary. Yeah, the elevator ride was very unique. <laughs> it just keeps on going and then it changes. They have, these, they have these pods that you sit like, I don't know, five or six people in. And because it's an arch, it, it's, you, you gotta, they talk about the um, mechanics, the construction of how they thought and how to do it. But it, it kind of turns and rotates as it goes up through the arch you know because you stay <laughs> you stay sitting but it's kind of like a pot it's just really really it's cool it's wow. different <laughs> quite an experience yeah. i get a little nervous on something like that and of course you know if i ever go to disney world i'll conquer myself through the haunted mansion which is a you know fun yeah ride. great ride yeah i can see you having a, a wonderful time at disneyland disney world yep disney world mm-hmm. yep that's the place yeah yeah and he talked about if when we go this spring uh we're thinking early may to taking the, the amtrak train to new york city yeah um he talked about some other things he wants to do like top on the rock yep right? on, on top of the rock and visit this place called pizza barn because this is a big challenge that i decided to do is you know a lot bigger than we have pizzas here but instead of being that small it's a two foot pizza <laughs> so i'm gonna be challenging myself to eat something that to big eat a, to eat a two, feet, two foot pizza, yeah. pizza. <laughs> okay <laughs> pizza is one of his favorite foods <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. we haven't talked about food yet okay no. <laughs> pizza is big huh what do you what kind of pizza uh you like anything on it Cheese, uh, just cheese, cheese, cheese and cheese. extra cheese. <laughs> cheese and Give extra me the cheese. cheese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All that's right. one thing. He's been a finicky eater, which is very common with people with Williams syndrome, also because they have um issues with te- texture. Um, okay. Yeah. So, um, when he was little in in uh, preschool, um, he did preschool for a few years at the Y, um he didn't used to like like silly putty or finger painting he didn't like the texture of it it took him a while to get used to that stuff mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. same with mm-hmm. food certain textures of food he doesn't like like cake he won't eat cake he doesn't like cake he doesn't like the texture of cake right. so. yeah okay yeah what, besides pizza what's your favorite food uh besides pizza i would to say my favorite now is cheeseburgers oh yeah good and one thing that we never talked about is sensitive sounds. Oh, that's right. Oh. Yeah, okay. yeah one, of the, one of the characteristics of Williams syndrome is they they have very sensitive, acute sensitive hearing mm-hmm. called hypercosis. And um, so there's sounds like blenders, vacuum cleaners. He's gotten used to 
that, you know, vacuum cleaners at least are very, um, so their, their hearing is so hypersensitive that things that are normal for us that don't hurt our ears, hurt their ears. So like blenders, sirens, you know, mm. fire alarms. All um, fire alarms were the worst, but I'm used to that. Yeah. He would mm. have, he would just have, if we were in a building and there was a fire alarm going, he would have his anxiety would just go through the roof and he would cover his ears and be like, ah, get me out of here. You yeah know? yeah i would yep. just calmly okay let's go we just let's get out <laughs> yeah but, and as over time it does get better you know with some of those sounds but there's still some sounds that are loud that he doesn't doesn't like to hear there's um a sander he doesn't like you know oh. uh doesn't like the sound of sanders you know I'll, i like belt sanders but not regular sanders or palm sanders that have it's they sound like bees buzzing around yeah <laughs> Yeah. Especially when in those scaling tool almost sounds the same. Mm -hmm. That's a tool I really hate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very interesting because even though he has a hearing loss, um, he still has that acute sensitive hearing for certain yeah. sounds. Like I remember being in the car one time, we had the radio on and he's like, oh, hear the bells in that song. And I'm like, what the bells? I don't hear the bell. I had to really listen. And then I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah, I hear it now. <laughs> but I, it took it right me. out. Yeah, I took him to mention it for me to stop and listen wow. and hear it, you know. Wow. So, I have hearing aids, I can listen to things even when there's sirens around, then I know how far they can be. Oh, wow. Josh, if you were to, um, if you were to meet a, a parent that just had a, a daughter or son with Williams syndrome, what would you tell them about what life's going to be like for their oh. newborn? Wow, that's a good question. That's a loaded question, too. <laughs> <laughs> I would say to them, um, to those of you out there that do have one syndrome, um, it's a, a it's a fun disability to me. And whatever your career goes, just have fun with it. That's great. Go go with the flow, huh? Go with the yeah. that's that would go. Go with the flow. Yeah. And <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and that's great. Uh, the other things that you could say too is like, you know, it'll be tough in the beginning, but you know, it'll get, it'll pe yeah, get people tough. will get through that. You'll get through those, those tough times and, and uh, yeah, yeah, it'll eventually be okay. You know, it'll be yeah. okay. Yeah, it'll well, be fun. You're, it'll be great. You, and, you yeah. both seem to be thriving here, mom and son. <laughs> yeah, it's one thing the Williams Cinema Association is a good um resource for families of people with Williams syndrome and for for individuals with Williams syndrome they're very supportive and lots of good information you know all all the seminars that I went to would talk about because people with Williams syndrome they have a certain way of learning and mm -hmm. they've come across from from research and learning um how they learn um what are some best approach on how to teach them to, to learn certain things, you know? Um, sure. And yeah. And so, you know, going to those, you know, was, was very helpful for me as a parent and I'll never forget my first experience going there, sitting there because here, a small state of Vermont, you know, run into it that, that many. And now, you know, since he's, he's now 30, we have a good number of people we know here in Vermont, but when he was first diagnosed, we didn't know anybody with that diagnosis. And yeah. um, so to go to, I think he was five, about five years old, the first convention we went to, so to go and be sitting in one of the seminars and sitting there looking around, you know, there's the person is talking about and you're sitting there, you're, you're relating to what they're saying. You're nodding like, yes, yes, yes. And you're looking around and all the other parents are doing the same exact thing. And I'm like, wow, I'm not alone in this, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> it must have been a revelation. Yeah, <laughs> that was heartening, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's great. Yeah. Well, we're about ready to wrap up uh, the interview. Any last words to mom? Who would like to say, Karen or Josh? Well, uh, you know, a, <clears throat> a musical once told me this phrase, and I love saying it to most people out there. What makes you different makes you special. Hey, that's a beautiful quote. I, I love that. What makes you different? Yeah. One thing I, one thing I will say about um, 
uh, someone with William Sunderman, and their musicality is, um, you know, like he can't, first of all, he can't read music. That's why he, but he can play by ear. And a lot of, um, not everyone, but a lot of them do have like perfect, perfect pitch. So they hear, like he can pick out, like I said, those, the different sounds and the song and, you know, the different, you know, the, the, like the bell. And I couldn't even hear it until I listened to it. Um, but that's why I think they're so um, good at music and why they can, you know, like he can pick up any instrument and just start playing it pretty much. I mean, it's not a hundred percent perfect, but it's still, it's pretty good. You know, it's pretty darn good. Yeah. It's and one, but one of the things with them is that they, so they emotionally feel that music. It just goes right through them. Like one person on, it was on a 60 minutes, um, uh, segment where they interviewed a few people with William Sarnum and one woman said it was like, um, music is like soup, um, flowing mm. through water, something like that. She Interesting. Said. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. And, um, but it's, they so emotionally feel it. Like there's certain songs that will just make him break down and cry. Cause he just right. feels that emotion coming from that. Right. Right. Like, right. Really right. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's right in your soul. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here. Yep. Yep. Well, I love that quote. What makes you different makes you special, Josh. And you are yeah. very <laughs> special. No question about it. Absolutely. I, and I love I think, it. I think that person to the left of you is pretty special, too. <laughs> thank mm. you. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. And you're pretty well, special, thank... too, Gary. <laughs> okay. Thank you for doing this today both of you. And um, I think we're done for the day.